Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the budget and crowding out. That's the downside of expansionary fiscal policy. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. So first of all, we need to understand what the national debt is. The national debt is the accumulation of all previous deficits and surpluses. When a government has a budget deficit, that is going to increase the national debt. And when we have a budget surplus, that means our national debt is going to decrease. But it's been a long time since we've had a surplus. In fact, our national debt today is over $31 trillion. And the US government finances that $31 trillion of national debt by selling government securities. So a budget deficit increases the national debt. And that occurs when we have taxes that are less than government spending because taxes are the revenue the government brings in and spending is the money going out. When that spending is greater than taxes, our national debt is going to increase because of the budget deficit. So if the government collects $100 billion in taxes and we have $120 billion worth of government spending, that means we're going to have a budget deficit for that particular year of $20 billion. And that means that the national debt will increase by $20 billion. If on the other hand, we have a budget surplus, that means that our taxes are going to be greater than government spending. So the tax revenues that the government collects will be greater than the money being spent. So if the federal government collects $140 billion worth of taxes in one year, and they spend $115 billion, that means that the budget surplus is going to be $25 billion. And that means that the national debt will decrease by that $25 billion. If the government had a balanced budget, that would mean that the amount of money brought in for taxes will equal the amount of money paid out for spending. So if the government brings in $130 billion worth of taxes and spends $130 billion, that means that the government will have a balanced budget. And that means for that particular year, the debt will not change. Now, some people mistakenly believe that a balanced budget means that the government has no debt. It's only that they have no new debt. And a budget surplus also doesn't mean there's no debt. It only means that the debt is going to decrease. Now back in unit three, you learned about automatic stabilizers. Automatic stabilizers are going to impact the national debt because when the economy slows, taxes, which are based on people's income, are automatically going to decrease. And that's because people are earning less income when the economy slows down. At the same time, government spending in the form of transfer payments is going to increase. And that's because more people qualify for things like food stamps and unemployment compensation when the economy slows down. And that means when the economy slows down, a balanced budget will become a deficit. And that's because of the automatic stabilizers we have. When the economy booms, on the other hand, we're going to have the opposite effect. Taxes are automatically going to increase and that's because people are earning more income and therefore income tax revenues will increase. At the same time, fewer people are going to qualify for transfer payments like unemployment and as a result, payments for those transfer payments are going to decrease. And as a result, government spending on those transfer payments is automatically going to decrease. And so when there is an economic boom, a balanced budget will actually become a surplus as a result of these automatic stabilizers. So now we're on to crowding out. Crowding out is the technical reason why some economists are worried about the national debt. To summarize what crowding out is, it means that a budget deficit is going to cause higher interest rates. Those higher interest rates are going to decrease gross investment within the economy. That is going to lead to less capital formation and less capital formation means slower economic growth. And crowding out is caused by expansionary fiscal policy, which means decreasing taxes or increasing government spending, both of which increase the deficit and the national debt. When it comes to showing the impact of a budget deficit on the loanable funds market, we have two ways of doing it. My preferred method is to shift the supply curve. In this way of illustrating the budget deficit, the government is taking loanable funds from the private market, leaving a smaller supply for private businesses to borrow. As a result, we see higher interest rates and a lower equilibrium quantity of loanable funds. The x-axis here is what happens to gross investment. And as a result, we can see on that x-axis less capital formation. The other way of dealing with crowding out on the loanable funds market is actually a little more intuitive, and that is shifting the demand curve. Here, the argument goes that the government is actually demanding loanable funds alongside private businesses. We are still going to see the increase in the real interest rate there, but here we see an increase in the quantity of loanable funds. But that increase in the quantity of loanable funds is in part national debt 
we are actually going to see a decrease in gross investment and capital formation. So when the government deficit spends, you can either shift the supply curve to the left or the demand curve to the right. Either one is acceptable on the AP macroeconomics exam. You should use the one that your college professor or teacher prefers. But either way, you have to know we're going to see an increase in the interest rate and a decrease in gross investment, which causes slower economic growth. If we have a budget surplus, we're going to have the opposite of crowding out occur. We're going to see a decrease in interest rates, an increase in gross investment. That means more capital formation. And as a result, we're going to see faster economic growth. And this increased economic growth can be caused by contractionary fiscal policy. When we get over to that loanable funds graph, you can either increase the supply of loanable funds because the government isn't borrowing as much money. That leaves more private supply for businesses. And as a result, we're going to see a decrease in the equilibrium real interest rate and an increase in the quantity of loanable funds. And that means greater gross investment. And just like before, instead of moving the supply curve, you could move the demand curve to the left. That means less demand of loanable funds because the government isn't borrowing as much. And, but either way, we're going to see a decrease in that real interest rate. Here you see a decrease in the quantity of loanable funds, but there is actually going to be an increase in gross investment as a result. Now, a little side note, make sure you don't shift both the supply and the demand curve. You have to pick one. I suggest you pick the one your teacher or professor prefers. Next, we're going to look at the impact of crowding out on the ASAD model. Expansionary policy with some crowding out is what we're going to see here. Here we see an ASAD model with YE being our equilibrium output and PLE being our equilibrium price level. Now expansionary fiscal policy is going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the right because of a decrease in taxes or increase in government spending. But then because of the decrease in gross investment, we're actually going to see a partial leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve. But in the end, with expansionary fiscal policy, even with some level of crowding out, the net effect is going to be a rightward shift of that aggregate demand curve. We're going to see greater price levels and greater equilibrium real output. And of course, with that higher output, we have lower unemployment. And that's the point of expansionary fiscal policy. So even with some crowding out, we're going to see expansionary policy shifting that AD curve to the right. When it comes to determining how effective fiscal policy is, it depends on how sensitive businesses are to interest rates in regards to purchasing new investments. And if investment is more sensitive to the interest rate, then we are going to see a decrease in the effectiveness of fiscal policy. And if investment is less sensitive to the interest rate, we are going to see an increase in the impact of fiscal policy on the economy. Now you could see a question on your exam where they say that expansionary policy is going to result in an equal amount of crowding out. Now this is a hypothetical situation for this type of question, but if you should see it, this is what it's going to look like on the graph. You're going to see a rightward shift as a result of the expansionary fiscal policy of lower taxes and or increased spending. And then you're going to see an equal amount of a decrease in gross investment as a result of the crowding out. The net effect is going to be no change in real output and the price level. Now this is just a hypothetical situation. In the end, expansionary fiscal policy is going to be expansionary unless they otherwise specify in the question. So don't assume that there's going to be a large amount of crowding out unless the question specifies it. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about crowding out and budget deficits. If you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.